So, wow. Holy God. Oh boy, there he goes. He's a robot. Look at the robot, everybody. He's the stupidest robot I've ever seen. Stupid idiot. What a fucking idiot that fucking robot is. Oh my God. Stupid robot. Oh, now you're, what's that? And the green grass grew. With the green grass grew. Another Patreon member. These things are racking up like A lot of good content on that patreon.com slash take your shoes off, including new solo episodes by Rick Glassman, titled Rick Glassman Nitro. People are really liking those, huh? Oh, God. <laughs> this thing again, huh? Yuck. Are you familiar with a species called the muskox? Mm hmm I went to school with the muskox. No, the, I'm talking about not the last name, the, the mammal. No, it was our mascot. So, oh, really? Yeah, based off of because our, so we actually had a What's muskox. What's the name of your team? The uh, Orange Muskox. Because this looks a lot like a muskox hide that's been skinned by probably... Do you want any Eskimos at all? Or? No. Well, I mean, I, not that I was aware of, but I didn't, you know, they might have been. I, I, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable. Maybe bleep that. <laughs> I don't bleep. Let me do the Got you hot chocolate. Oh wow, thank you. It's, it's like an hour old, so I microwaved it. Let me know if we need to make it hotter, but I got the whipped cream and the sprinkles on the side. Damn, thanks, guy. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. All right, it's kind of interesting. There's really no labeling on this at all. Oh, it's hot chocolate. Yeah, kind of a blank, generic murder cup, sort of. GMC. Well, I mean, this that? this is where you don't trace the crime type of cop, you I mean, know? it's not on camera. It's not? It is. Yeah, but just the blank, every cup I know has a logo on it or something, and here I get this blank sort of no Are DNA. Are you familiar with OEM? Boxes? Yeah, they're a good band. Oh. <laughs> um, 80s? No, OEM is, is it's, it's, it's basically, it's, it doesn't have the manufacturer packaging. Uh, it's just, it saves money on packaging, so it, it lets the end consumer get it for a cheaper price. Well, I think it also lets people who have murder on their mind get away, too, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I get what you're, I get what you're laying down. I think I'll be laying down if I drink this. You know, I gotta focus this, will you put both hands in the air for a sec? Well, if you're asking me to do the wave, yes, I will. Got it, you good? Going. You ever done that on a uh, roller coaster where you put your arms in the air? Sometimes I don't know if when I'm on a roller coaster, am I doing the wave or am I on a roller coaster? Am I? Oh, I totally know what you're talking about. If I could finish, if I'm have, I can't tell if I'm having fun at a on an amusement park or I'm at a baseball game. Yeah. And I think it's because the blood rushes to the tips of your arms and your mind gets confused. Yeah. And it's a thing. It's called wave brain. Yes. And you get, well, not sure if you're being sincere. I love that. Harlan, welcome back to the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. Thank you're you. You're sitting like you're a giant in a little chair. Oh, let me... Ah, <laughs> God. <laughs> Is there anything I could get you? We have two pillows back there. Do you need more? No, no. I mean, I might want one later when I nod off, but for <laughs> now, I'll... Here, lean forward for a second. Uh -huh. Come here. Okay. Y yeah. What good Lord, child. What the... Jesus. Just fixing that. What are you, my priest? <laughs> okay. Oh, ow. Okay. God, All right. God. Here, try that. How's that? Yeah, I think <laughs> I've just been sexually assaulted. Have you ever been sexually assaulted? Do you feel comfortable talking about it? I can talk, look, I'll talk about anything, but if I could, if you'll indulge me. Yeah, of course. Because right away you're getting into some sensitive stuff. Right. And if I could just read something from my legal team before I, we get going. Of course. 
Would you want us to edit this out? No, this I, this needs to be heard because uh, I don't want any litigation. Your glasses, by chance, so you could read it better? Yeah. Good. And then we can just get on our way. Yeah, go ahead. And uh, but I just want to say I'm happy to be here. This is f nice. I love spending, but my legal team advised me just based on other mm -hmm. interactions with you that I get this disclaimer out of the way, and then we can just start. Um, as set forth in this, the year of our Lord, the forthwith term shall govern the terms of the said I Like Shoes podcast hosted by one Richard Glassman. Under the following guidelines, eventualities, and conditions, notwithstanding all civil liberties and humanitarian clauses, the invited guest, Harland Williams, mm -hmm. herein referred to as the special talent, forthwith <laughs> shall at no time during said podcast be subjugated to or coerced into situations involving manipulation, false pretenses, rape, grand larceny, physical violence, which I think that initial thing could, perjury, theft, slander against priests or crimes against the state, and again, rape. Uh, <laughs> well, I was just thinking about a joke I told earlier. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Under California law, penal code 75589922. Oh, oh, one sec. I want to look that up well, so I can read it. Uh, okay. California Penal Code. Hold on one sec. I'm sorry. Seven five five eight nine nine two two three X L K five nine nine dash nine four three two six five eight nine nine six four two one one seven D Q S H zero one. Any capitals? Uh, D Q S H one. DQ SH01 and the one's a capital. Those are they're rare, but sometimes numbers right, that's are the one that, has, that has the thing and the thing. The, the thing and the, that, ben, that little ben bend Graham. at the top and then ben the thing Graham. underneath. Yeah, Ben Graham, the thing. It is agreed upon that at no time shall special talent be coerced into breaking state laws and under no circumstances right. shall host Richard Glassman attempt to violate special talent civil rights or infringe on special talent's right to a fair trial mm. under the Victims' Right Act as delegated in McIntosh versus Warner, 1984, case number 444-999-4509-8225. Well, case what? 444-999-445-09-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-9-
Creditor Award. You can see it's right there. Congratulations. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow. We know that you have many more stories to share. It goes on and on. Um, and then it ends here uh, with uh, penal code 0073735963, which is also the password to Mike Tyson in Mike Tyson's punch out. That's 0073735963. Boy, what a legal team you put together. What a power team. If the glove fits. You then uh, then buy it, you know, if it's a good glove. Well, my lawyer, Johnny, said if the glove fits, you must acquit. I thought it was if the glove fits, you must acquit. Uh, well, maybe I'll ask him later when I'm talking with him. But I'm glad we got that out of the way. I could see if I could get him on the phone. Try it. He's a busy guy, but... Uh, could you, uh, we'll bleep it out. Could you give me his phone number? Johnny Cochran? Yeah. Yeah, he's at one, 818. Yep. I'm not sure why this is coming. I read you his letter. I don't know why you're... I'm just curious if it's if the glove fits, you must have quit. No, he didn't quit. He's still my lawyer. Do you think he's solving a case? Been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. This is Johnny Cochran. Yeah. No, he's, he has one of those uh, voice uh, things. He's a lawyer, so he has uh, lawyers have these. Uh, well, that was his thing. He can forward. Oh, is it? that was his? Yeah. Lawyers have these fancy. Uh, you can forward uh, messages mm. to them. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I guess we could. You could text him later and. Let me know and we could put it up on the screen. I guess I could. I mean, I feel like his letter was very, uh, you know, concise and, and, and said what it, you know, outlined my legal concerns and parameters. But if you, if you think you need more, I'm, I'm willing to do what we need to do to get through this. Listen, why don't you have a sip of your hot chocolate? You know, I... Uh, <laughs> I brought a, a nice cool drink. I think I'll... Uh, no, no, have a, uh, have a sip of your hot chocolate. <laughs> sure. Or sure. why don't you take a look in the, uh, in the, the little cup for the um, sprinkle, sprinkles and whipped cream. Oh, God. Dude, that looks you want like... a spoon? That looks like Koa Campground vomit in there. Have you ever been to a Koa Campground? Not when there's been vomit. You will. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> you really love campground humor. Unbelievable. I've never. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, wow. Whoa, guy. Whoa. 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 What the oh. hell? Do you want the whipped cream? Oh. Here, put some sprinkles oh, no, on it. No. Oh, fuck. I just cummed. That was a big one. I think it flew right into this cup. <laughs> Jesus, Christina. What's it like working with the Farley brothers? The Farley brothers? Chris Farley's brother. The Farley brothers, they are, um, they are pranksters, those oh. guys. I heard once one of them went up to this girl and put her around, and then she didn't even know it was coming, and, and they pretended it was theirs, and then she just bought, paid for basically all of their stuff. What? <laughs> I heard that they put her around, and they, she didn't know who that was going on there. So they as a joke, they all get, you know, they, they're fucking around, oh, and they God. got it so that she believed it was going through bigger than like in well, obviously bigger than it needed to be but bigger than it even was it gonna be able to fit and they made her pay for, they got her to pay for it all oh boy that's uh that's a good prank if you can pull it off <laughs> well i heard if anybody can they can it's chris farley's brother yeah the farley brothers yeah so i mean rocket man how much did it change your life 
<laughs> Rocket Man. Yeah. Rocket Man. My the movie I did. You do you mean Elton John's song? No, no, the movie you did. The movie Rocket Man. Rocket Man. It, Rocket Man. Man. Is that racist? No, no. Okay. What language was that? Uh, I can't. I, I sometimes can't tell the difference between Korean and Japanese. I could in text, but not yeah. in speaking. It sounded a little Mandarin to me. Mm. Uh, so no, not not racist. You're allowed to sing in any language you want in the United States of America. You know they're trying to change uh, the the word Mandarin in the states, which is not our job to do. They think it stigmatizes women that uh, that they're not supposed to be reading, and it's supposed to be man or or womandarin. Really? Yeah. Which which also. It's confusing because there's more than just men and women. Well, there's also Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, and on that uh, aquatic note, they're also taking the uh, beginning off of manatees. Yeah, and what's happened? We've been getting a lot of golfing accidents because they've taken the word "man" off of manatee. So it's just tees. It's just a tee, and a lot of golfers, golfers have been smacking right. manatees in, or wow. tees in the face with their nine irons. And just you know, it's just funny slamming that they're, them. They're, they're, and smacking, they're endangered and they're just slamming yeah. them. They're slamming and smacking their T's in their faces. But right. what about their D's in the woman a T's? Aha. Uh -huh. Which is what we refer to as woman's tits. Wh woman's T's, a woman's T's, a woman T's. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Do you go, you sound like you probably go you to UCLA. strip joints. Do you go to strip joints a lot? I've only been a few times. But you sound like you, and you look like you might. Oh, I do love a woman, man. I love a woman tease. You do? Yeah. Do you like big breasts or small ones? You're going to make fun of my answer, and I almost don't want to say it because you're always making jokes. And I think Not you're this gonna, time. It really depends on the personality. The, so, the shape and size? More so the size. The shape, I, I'm pretty, I usually like a kind of a rounded shape for a tea. Okay. Yeah. Why though? I'm curious. I'm used to it, but depending on the personality, uh, their size. Are they funny? Are they kind? Are they dry? Are they quiet? Are they loud? Do they have big boobs? What if a girl's a mute? How do you like her breasts if she can't make noise? Look at those fingers. I mean, you really, you're like a koala that's... Uh, just olive oiled up its clit or something. <laughs> Friends at a funny time. Yeah, I mean, you're just, your finger, your thumbs are flying around like a koala that just uh, ran out of a eucalyptus fire and its little fuzzy ass is on up in flames. Wow. Um, Look at your E.T. fingers going up the side too. Have you seen E.T. recently? Yeah. What do you think? I think uh, it's an endearing film. Mm -hmm. He's he's a little... Um, you talking about Spielberg or The Alien? The Alien. Right. I think, he'd, I think when he grows up, he'd probably make a great proctologist. Oh. Because he's already got the light on his finger, but, you know, he, he's got, got the thing... Oh, well... Johnny Cochran's calling me Oh, back. is that my lawyer? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Great. See what he has to say. Uh, Mr. Cochran? Yeah, Mr. Cochran here. What's up? Oh, hey, I have your client, Harlan Williams, here. and we Uh-huh. Yeah. We had a question for you. Um, uh-huh. Is the saying that if the glove fits, you must acquit? Or is it if the glove fits, you must acquit? And also tell us no. how you came up with that. Wait, Mr. Cochran? Boy, you pissed hold on, him off. hold on, Mr. Cochran, it cut out. Mr. Cochran? Mr. We can't hear you, Mr. Cochran. If the glove fits, you must have quit. <laughs> well, <laughs> wait a minute. You're... I'm going to call you right back, Mr. Cochran. There seems to be a connection. Okay, okay, yeah, call me back. I'm on T Mobile. <laughs> oh, wait, we can hear you now. Oh, oh he's, a I'm, you know, he's a busy lawyer. I'm surprised he even got through to him. Um,. Phone? Yeah, Mr. Cochran. Uh, oh, Jesus. It's the, we're having a tough connection here. We might need you to be even louder than you normally are. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, wow. Whoa. All right, so go ahead. What's the I saying? I have to sue my if own lawyer. Like this, you must acquit. Yes, it is. See? It, what, what is it now? Yeah, it, it, uh, plural. 
plural. You must acquit. Multiple accounts. That's my yeah. lawyer. See? That's my yeah, lawyer. Ha- yeah, so you... Uh-huh. Oh, all right, well, that's all we wanted to know, but... God bless. All right, take care now. Oh, uh, God bless. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, I don't know why you're laughing at my legal team. No, I'm laughing at the fucking setup. It's, I mean, it was, I don't know if we're going to be able to use it. It was so loud. Well, oh, I mean, I, I distinctly remembered you asking to be louder. So if you're looking to sue my lawyer, I don't think you have grounds. Boy, look at your fingers go. I've never seen, it's like um, E.T. getting rammed by a... A cheerleader or something. The way your fingers fly around. That hurt my ears so much I couldn't really understand. You know what I think it is? I think he's just so much time has passed. Yeah. He's kind of out of touch now. We should call Johnny Cochran's son, who's also a lawyer, Johnny Cochran Jr. Well, I think I we we just I have Let's give one Johnny lawyer. Cochran Jr. Well, well I've worked with Johnny Cochran Jr. before. Is he as loud as Johnny? No. Okay. I don't know if I'll answer. I haven't talked to him in a little bit. Hello. Johnny Cochran Jr., Johnny Cochran's son. Is that you? Yeah. Uh, yes, indeed, but you can call me Larry. Larry. <laughs> How are you doing? Is this Richard Glassman? Yeah. So Johnny Cochran Hi, Jr. Glassman. Johnny Cochran Jr., just to be clear, you want us to call you Larry now? Yeah, you can go ahead and give me a call uh, at, the, at the name of Larry. Is, is, that, that, would be is, that, is that because you and your father don't get along anymore and you're trying to distance yourself from him by name? Well, uh, we, uh, God distanced us. My, my father is dead. <laughs> Wait a minute. This isn't his real son. I wonder who, because we just spoke to your father. He, well, well, I can tell you what. I can tell you what. The, uh, the afterlife is a, is a son of a bitch, isn't it? Because uh, if you spoke to my father, then you were speaking to him from the grave. That man is dead. And I don't mean metaphorically. I mean literally this guy's away. a nut. This guy's a crackpot. Whoever this is, some kind of it's crackpot. Well, Cochran. I think it's a, some <laughs> kind of a crackpot. Well, all right. Well, let's find out. If you're really Johnny Cochran Jr., now known as Larry Cochran, um, tell us something that only Larry Cochran would know. Um, when I was a boy, mm-hmm. I was indeed touched uh, <laughs> by a man. Uh, who was a neighbor. Uh, his name was Yanni. Ya- uh, Yanni? The singer? Y- Yanni. Yes, with a J. Oh, my God. The singer. Yes. Yanni. Yes, so my father, my father indeed knew about that. Wow. And, so, and did, what did he do about it? What did he do about it? <laughs> well, I can tell you what, that man hasn't seen the light of day ever since. Oh. Because he is, he is also dead. Okay, well, that's... Larry Cocker, is there anything you want to plug while you're here? What the hell? A couple of crackpots. Good God. Is there anything that you've been working on that you want to unplug while, while we have you? <laughs> Well, I've since gotten over my trauma as a little boy. Uh, I truly have. I walked the, the straight and narrow path. So right now, I am writing a. I am writing an adult book. I am writing an adult book about my journey to the top of the of the of the legal stratosphere. Okay, and where where can we look out for that book? <laughs> Not. Well, they, well, I couldn't find a publisher for it just yet because they didn't understand the concept. But you know, I have a publisher. I can maybe introduce you to. Oh, oh, your you do. book, your book. Yeah, is... I'll tell you what. Let me talk to you about it after um, after this podcast. But while we do have you, um, your father, uh, I have a, f- a feeling that maybe somebody lied to you, and he is alive, and you have some misinformation. Um, but I want to know what it is that he taught you because he skyrocketed to popularity after his famous hit s- single quote: "If the glove fits, you must acquit." Plural quits. And, yes, yes, indeed. And there's a lot of there's a lot of talk going around that that's actually not his line, and he read that somewhere or heard it from somewhere. Do you know the origins of that saying? And did your father actually come up with it? Speak on that, Larry. <laughs> well, my father actually did come up with that uh, with that saying. If the if the glove fits, um, if it doesn't fit, then you must acquit. Absolutely, that was his quote, indeed. Because what what you have is or if it doesn't fit, you right. have a glove. Yeah, right. Right. You have a glove. Okay, we follow. 
And it's that glove. Are you following? Do, Harlan, are you following? Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. If that glove does not fit, yeah. meaning, you know, because on one hand, a glove could fit. And then on the other hand, the glove could not fit. Yeah, but there's a left and a right. So it only goes on one hand, right? Yes. Well, you know, you have two gloves, which is why it's a quits. Right. Which is plural. Oh, so if the because gloves, if, glove, if the gloves. Yeah. yeah. But if it was one glove, then you would acquit. But because it's two gloves, which is plural, then you acquit. But aren't you, aren't you, gloves. aren't you acquitting the singular person and not the plural gloves? But I think if you listen closely that he said in the trial, if the glove fits, fits. plural, meaning there could be two. Right. Okay, go on. Fits. Yes. Who's the, who's the lawyer here? You or I? Uh, well, you you were me. Which is a noun. You were me. Which is a noun, by the way. Okay. Uh, so if the glove fits, be, being plural, then you have to acquit. Fits. So uh, clearly, my father came up with that um, with that quote with that saying. Harlan, do you have any questions? Any legal questions or anything you want to know about his father, your lawyer? Uh, I work with. Uh with Johnny and I have a uh, lawyer uh, client uh, privilege and mm-hmm. so I'm not at liberty to discuss Does that go both ways Larry? Yeah. It does. <laughs> well, I don't want to talk about my personal life, but you know, I did dabble in college a little bit. Uh, there was a man named Buck, strong guy, mm-hmm. real strong guy. Gives it a hell of a massage. Now, now Larry, I have a question uh, um uh, it, it, he is public about cuz he he has worked with a lot of famous celebrities. And one of his clients, um, and if I'm not mistaken, you're actually working with him now, so thank you for being able to step away. But one of his clients is the guy from The Equalizer. Um, do you think you could get him on the phone? Because he, I know he's very big into black culture of the 90s and probably has a lot of takes. Could he tell us what he was thinking and feeling during the OJ trial when you were just a kid and he was, you know, coming up doing his thing? Well, let me give him a call. Let me, let, let me see what I can do. Great. Who's the Hello? Hey, is this the guy from the Equalizer, aka my favorite client, Mr. Denzel? Oh, you got him right it is, huh? Huh? How are you doing, sir? Oh, I'm doing good, Johnny. Johnny, I'm doing real good. How are you? Well, I gotta more, say, to say ice. so myself, brother, I'm doing pretty well. I I need to get a cat. I'm here on this uh I need to go Radio to the bathroom. interview or something like that. I'm not quite sure what it is, but these guys, I'm assuming they are white men, they, they have some questions about, uh, about a past case that my father had, dead or alive, because one of them seems to think that my father is representing him right now. <laughs> That's crazy. You mean to tell me this man here thinks that you, your father... Is representing him right now. He thinks that he is indeed his attorney. I said, yeah, he definitely does think that. Well, this man is crazy. This man has been bamboozled. Eh? You understand what I'm telling you? He's been hoodwinked, run amok. This man should be in prison. Well, he can't be in prison when he's got the legal help of, you know, my father indeed. Well, how could he possibly have the legal help of your father if your father is indeed deceased? You understand what I'm telling you, sir? Don't let these men get in your head. Don't let them get into your heart. Because that is indeed where the soul lies. You understand what I'm telling you? Because at your highest point, at your highest point, that's when these guys will come for you. You understand what I'm telling you? I got to admit, uh, uh, Denzel Washington of Two Guns fame starring Mark Wahlberg, I'm not quite sure where you're going with this one. You know exactly where I'm going. I'm going to the top, but I'm also going to the bathroom. So if you please give me a minute, I got to go. Click, click. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Anybody there? Yeah, we were here. We were just listening. I'm so sorry I couldn't get him on the phone with you guys. We kind of got on a tangent there. We were speaking about some things, some personal things, but... uh, That's quite quite a blanketed statement to refer to that as personal when... uh, when, uh, there is a client privilege attorney, but good, good stuff. Uh, and thanks for, uh, thanks for clearing that up for us. Now, then what's the, what's the name of your bug, b- 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 book that you want to plug? Uh, the right from wrong, the art of not knowing. And Harlan, do you have any more questions? Well, I just have one for you that I thought was kind of not fair to him. One for me or one to Den- for Denzel? For him, the Cochran's kid. Okay. Tommy or whatever. What's your name? Larry. 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 Uh, 
as Rick was getting into the chair, and I don't know how close you guys are, and I don't think this is fair, and Larry should know this. You you made a comment. This isn't a blanketed statement. Mm. And as you said it, there was a blanket in your hand. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's fair to be doing visual gags when someone's clearly on the phone and can't see it. And you threw a blanket over the back of the, you know, just you know almost non-caring, almost insensitive to your friend and uh, your relationship to uh, Larry. Billy, Larry Cochran. And I just don't like that kind of thing. Larry, I'll tell you what, that makes sense what he said. I'm going to actually put together a little montage and send it on over to you, okay? Oh, that would be greatly appreciated. You can go ahead. My mailing address is 21650. Oxnard Avenue. That's Oxnard Avenue. That is in Woodland Hills. You can go ahead and send it to Suite 350. Care of me, actually. And are we Larry. Larry Cochran. Yes, one of the L's is silent. So there's two L's. L-L-A-R-R-Y. But we say it as if there's one L? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would it it's sound like? What would it sound like if there were two L's that, that both made sounds? Well, like how the Mexicans do. Larry. All right. Well, thank you but so I, much for all your help. Yes. Take care. Yeah, and I don't want to appropriate uh, we'll send you that montage now. Thank you very much. Do we have a U? That's, you know. So if I open this right now, you'd be mad. What to do that? Right. I don't want to. It's, it's not a, do you think I will? I don't know. Yeah, I'm really not. I'm so sorry. But is it kind oh, of... Also, you ever watch the stand-up on AGC? No. Okay. First of all, this isn't a blanketed statement. We're both very hyperactive people. Kind of send you a... Uh, George, so would you make up whatever <laughs> that kind of stuff? Okay. This is a blanketed statement. Mm. You see what I'm doing here? Yeah. And that's a big blanketed statement because Daddy gets paid. I would get ribs or steak. Yeah. This isn't a blanketed statement, but my thoughts are: mm. I got my first TV show is exciting, and uh, you know it's a it's a blanketed statement to say that only when you're on a TV show it's exciting. Whoa, it's weird that you just you said, just said blanketed blanket, statement blanket and the blanket just fell what off the your fuck? chair. What's so if you can do other than be an actor? I mean, and this is a blanketed statement to go on on a date because you know you rather you know, that make that a blanketed statement. All right, well. Right, you know, but I thought it was really blanket. I'm enjoying it. Not, you already got them all. I was like, so, At this and house, that's not a blanketed you statement. Know what? It, you could always do. Yeah, it was just kind of a weird energy. And this is a blanketed statement. Pardon me. It's very much a blanketed statement. But Americans will blanketed blanket statement. Blanket statement. And I was out of town, and it's, I'm on two shows now. Two network. Push it like we just. That's a blanketed statement. Um, a blanketed statement. <laughs> don't hold the. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, it's kind of you can't kind like say that about everybody. It's a bit of a blanket statement. Yeah, I guess so. Whoa, what just happened? <laughs> you guys, hey, I didn't write the book. I just read it. Legal concerns and it's quite a blanket statement to refer to that as personal when uh, when uh, there's a client privilege attorney. Kind of not cool what you did, but um. I just feel like if you're going to have a sense of humor and do gags, like, don't do it behind people's back. Wow. Let's keep it on the brown. That's uh, some nice muskox hide right there. I had a friend up in uh, in Hudson's Bay, Nuntuk, Nuntuk, Hong What happened to him? Or he was an Eskimo boy, and uh, seeing all this muskox hide around just reminds me of when I was a boy and used to go up there in the winters and we'd skin us some muskox and whoever did this knew what they were doing, I'll tell you that. Mm. But anyways, sorry. No, it's okay. Um, we saw war on the muskox and the brown motif. Yeah. Um, a, a while ago, I, somebody sent me a package and I don't know what it is. Uh, this is a fan made this. Or, okay. And I thought maybe we could do a little unboxing. And since you worked with the Farley Brothers and you've been in this business for a while, yeah. uh, you probably could do this better than I. Probably. Um, okay. I'll just take care of this part. Um, I really don't remember what this is. And uh, I, if I, or who it's from, but I vaguely remember it was somebody's girlfriend or wife made this, I think. But I do apologize, whoever you are, unless there's a, a name in here, I can't even give credit because this was so long ago and I, I have boxes and I, anyway, anyway I ended up finding it. Why don't you just find out which of your friend's girlfriends or wife works at Amazon? Oh, but I don't know who they are. So it could be, I mean, it's a fan's wife that works at Amazon. 
And you want me to open your gift, which uh, is sort of an honor, by the way. Yeah, I just think it would be cool because do it on camera. Like, okay. wow, s somebody who's a fan of mine sent me something, and I'm having somebody whom I'm a fan of open it. Can I just say before I get deeper into this uh, package, yeah. how fun is this wrapping? I mean, just the splash of turquoise, green, and blue. How fun is this? Festive, light, uh, really lifting my mood as I delve deeper into this uh, packaging. Oh boy, what do we have here, guy? Wait a oh, second. Oh, that's awesome. Well, wait, wait, put, don't put it on the right, put well, it on the hard, put it on the hard. Well, that's what she said. That's what she said. Um, if I could open it before you get uh, all aroused. It's and really by the cool. way, can I just say this packaging, the, the, the white polka dots, uh -huh. uh, a riot, just a riot. I, as you can see, I'm a packaging guy, and this is a real rompous ride through uh, and this string. I mean, A rompous ride through what? You didn't finish? Well, through Helen Keller's underpants. And I didn't want to finish because that's, some people don't like that talk. But you did finish in Helen Keller's underpants? Well, I think this packaging is a rompous ride. Oh, put it on the put it on the on the heart. Well, that's what she said. Helen Keller. It, oh. How did she tell well, you? Well, she can't. She, okay. she can only indicate. Oh, that's uh, really cool. Is wow. there a card? Is there a card? No. But there, it's almost like you knew it was in the box. Almost yeah, that there's. there's a card. Oh, okay. How funny you. Just sense that, or? Well, there's there's got to be a card. There's right? got to be a card. Okay, and what, I, what does that say on his sweater? Take your shoes off, which is oh. different than the keep your shoes on. Forthwith terms shall govern the terms of the said I Like Shoes podcast. You know what's so fun about this? That's I, really cool. I love a surprise gift, and I didn't even know that the Mucinix uh, Snock Goblin was made into a plushie. Oh my God. Do you use Mucinex? I, not need, I do sometimes. When you have giant snot goblins? Because these are, these are a riot. What kid doesn't want a mucus doll? All right, shall I read the card? I mean, it has your name on it. I don't know if you want me Maybe to... Maybe I should. I don't know. What do you think? You read it. Well, okay. Show us what the card looks like, though. Well, if you can stop being card bossy. I'm just trying to get through a gift, and I feel like you're pushing your will on me. In a so it says, uh, "You're awesome." You're awesome, Rick. It says Rick plus N, and then the opening part of the card is in Mandarin. Fortunately, I took that at Devry. So Hung Tao Bai Sing Dai Tung Gao. Wait, what does that mean? Well, I, it says, we're really happy to send you this gift. And then in English, it says goblin. And then, I hope you will like it. Monaco. Do you know someone named Monaco? Well, thank you, Monaco. Um, well, there's more. Oh. It says, Rick, it's hard to be charming in a card, so here is just a list we made. You're turning into your father, bought a doorstop for work tits, was, stolen the net dag, we love Casey, Esther looks like she smells, we want more of Rick jamming with musicians, you may have rekindled my love for magic, we wonder how big Kevin Bacon's sh shorts must be. Shits. How would you know? Ooh, man, there's a huge shit. Thanks for all the laughs and truly sincere moments. Can't wait to see what comes next. Boy, that Harlan Williams guy sure is something special, isn't he? Did he we, write that in English or in really, Mandarin? Excuse me. We really like the way he dresses. We like his cadence. We really enjoy Harlan Williams and all that he represents and what he brings to this world. If we had a chance to spend time with Harlan Williams, we surely would. But in this card, we don't have enough time to talk about Harlan Williams and all the things we love about him. But let us just sneak in that we love the way he talks and the way he... <laughs> I was thinking about that joke again. 
Rick Glassman Boppers for Life, Sean. And I, there wasn't room for the last name, but I think it's Sean Wait, Cassidy. Wait, I thought there was a different name. There was another name that you had said. Well, upside, up, it looks like the Chinese name is Monaco. It looks like two people signed it. A Chinese person. Can I see the, the, the animal as well? Well, it's called mucus. Wait. Achoo! What did you just call me? No, that's the me like spewing out mucus. Oh, I thought you were angrily calling me a Jew. You're Jewish? When, when did this happen? Are oh. you cereal? Um, so just so people could see uh, just some of the Mandarin that he was reading. Yeah. Um, Isn't that such a fluke that I took it at DeVry and I, I was able to just... What made you want to get into it? This is very cool. Thank you so much for this. This is, this is beautiful. Well, I don't know how beautiful m clumps of mucus with eyes is. It's, I'll tell you I something. I mean, what's next, a diarrhea ball doll? I mean, I don't know where, where you're coming from. I'm really getting a nice collection over here. Mm. Thank you so much. Sure, you're welcome. Uh, Monaco and oh, Sean. I thought you meant for my well, reading. thank you for, for reading, reading it. it and you know, he it. mentioned uh, a couple of things, the door stops. Yeah. It's actually great timing that he mentioned the door stops because... Well, when Jim Morrison passed away, they had no choice. Right, the, right. I mean, the doors had to stop. stop. I know. Um, but it might be a coincidence that they were also referencing my um, cousin Iris has oh a my master God. manufacturing. She has beautiful eyes, by the way, Thank Iris. You. She has a manufacturing... I love her sister, Cornea. She's a wonderful girl, too. Yes. Great eyes. Yes. Sorry, go ahead. It's okay. Uh, cleaning gloves where you wear gloves and uh, you basically they basically sell themselves. Well, Every they, time you put them on, a sale is made. And if they fit... They must have quit. Now... Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with my cousin Iris, uh, if you want to either go to rickglassman.com and check out the store, you could see where she has those sure. door stops or gloves. Sure. Um, but here's a little commercial that, uh, that she put together. Wonderful. Hi, I'm Iris. I'm Rick's cousin from Cleveland, Ohio. I own Master Manufacturing Company, and I sell a lot of different products. Today, I brought my best sellers to show to you because I think every home should be equipped with my doorstops. They come in all colors, not just the ordinary old brown, but the, I have gray, I have beige, and the brown, and then I make various colors. For a baby's room, for a kitchen, I have red, all the primary colors, yellow, blue, green, and then in the large size for the commercial use, I have a yellow with a magnet on it, a brown, and a uh, orange, and they're used in hotels, in restaurants, and wherever a large door is required. Many, many restaurants uh, uh, have them as, uh, as well as hotels, as I said. I, I'm so sorry, I forgot to pick up and show you what I, I brought along. <laughs> you gotta have the bag open. <laughs> oh, I'll put the brown on here. Oh, that's gray, okay. How about this way? Not as many, and I'm showing the Except it would be nice if I didn't put it upside down. Oh, he's got these upside down. I'm gonna do it this way. Okay, is that all right? I'm gonna put one in the package. How about that? Wait, 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 before you do it, what do you want me to do now? These are some of the colors of the doorstops. We have red and green to let Santa in, in to, uh, for Christmas, and we have a blue for Hanukkah, of course, but you can use them in a baby's room, a kitchen, anywhere. All the small, the beige is a good household color. And then we have the industrial ones, which are over here. Still in the package, but there's a brown, an orange, and a yellow, and the yellow also comes with a magnet, uh, and that's for the commercial use and, and where there's danger of someone 
uh, needing a doorstop to hold a heavy door. These are the only ones made at, that are so large and heavy duty uh, combination of rubber on the smaller ones and a, a, a mixture of rubber, a rubber compound on the larger ones. In addition, we make the greatest household cleaning glove. Hey, Iris, could I stop you? Could you, could you put the glove back and you, could you say, and have I got a surprise for you? Okay. Two. And have I got a surprise for you. These are the greatest gloves. Anybody who just feels them buys them. And when you can use them anywhere, they attract dust. Wait, hold on, Iris. You didn't say that they're, they're meant for cleaning yet. You just say they attract dust. Okay. So it just sounds like they're gloves that get dusty. Okay, so let's go back. Let's yeah, so, so, and have I got a surprise for you. But if, if you could really sell, like, oh my gosh, have I, you know what I mean? Okay. Oh my gosh, have I got a surprise for you. These are the greatest cleaning gloves you could ever have. All you have to do is touch them and there's a sale made. I mean, and the people that use them, they love them, they come back, they give them for gifts. They just, all you do is clean, throw them in the washing machine and you have a brand new pair of gloves. And when you wear them, oh, it, it makes cleaning a joy, dusting a joy. It tra tracks the dust boat in an automobile, in the home, any commercial venture, wherever you need a glove to clean, here it is. Well, thank you for the interest. Nice being with you. I'm going to go up and do some work. Some dusting, of course. Bye-bye. <laughs> Keep going. Oh. <laughs> you know what we forgot? What's that? Shouldn't we put in my web the web address? If you'd like to purchase our products, uh, contact Amazon where they're on sale or master, M A S T E R M F G C O dot com, uh, our web address, and 1 800 323 5513, our phone number for uh, places where they can be purchased. Bye bye, and thanks for your interest. A little further. And that's, we got it. Oh, that's amazing. I must have more products though. <laughs> right? So how perfect, this, I do know what this one is. Uh, this is uh, well, from it's sealed. I don't know how you would. Because I was expecting this. They mailed it to me. Um, they told me about this. I'm like, what a perfect product for the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. Okay. Now, you know, when you came here, tell me what you forgot. You gave me a great compliment when you came in. Well, I said you looked really, really healthy and nice. About the, the shoes. About my shoes? Remember you said that you were thinking about me, and that's why you forgot to bring your socks. Oh, yeah. I brought, and I had you gave me socks to wear. Didn't. Oh, here's the gloves sort of so people creepy. could see them live time. Check these out. They sent a few pairs if you want one. Oh, if they fit. Yeah. I um, must do what? Uh, you must uh, take one home. No, I must acquit. Oh, right. If they fit. Which one of you, what color do you, do you like? I'd probably like the Mickey Mouse hand so that when I... Uh, I like those too. I'm actually going to try those ones on. Let's try this out and see how well they clean. Okay. Look at this. 
Wow. Oh boy. Look at this. The real tell me the truth. No joke even. Okay. If you don't think they're comfortable and a great material, tell us. What do you think? I think they're amazing. Wow. Think of all the things you could get off with wearing these. All the cleaning you could do. <laughs> boy. Sale just got made. I feel like I just shoved my hand up a ShamWow's ass. What's your obsession with ShamWow? Just it's an absorbing conversation topic. Hmm? What? No, I wasn't. I was rubbing. It was a rubbing sound you heard. Look at this. Look at the cleaning I'm doing. Oh, I'd call it a ShamWowing, but you call it what you want. Yeah, you just love ShamWow. I love ShamWows. I remember I wanted to lose weight once, so I wrapped one around myself and wandered into an oil slick and uh, just. <laughs> And I was about 12 pounds lighter. What does that mean? Well, what happened, what's the science behind that? Uh, you know, whatever. Okay. Everyone has their own diets. Clean, look at the dust that's on this. Okay. Now touch it and it's gone. Oh my God, except it's on this now. You so throw it into the wash. It's, but it's not it gone, wash. it's transferred. You throw said it it's it gone and it's all it's it did was of transferred. This. Yeah, it's all for this. that's not what you You know implied. what I'm saying. No, I know what you're saying, but these people don't. You're implying something that's uh, false and... Uh, but this isn't even the new product I wanted to share. Okay. They have them for socks, dude. Oh, Microfiber socks for cleaning and dusting. Clean faster and better. That's it. Oh, no. Wait a minute. There's more. Clean faster, better, and easier. I have a friend with no legs. Do they have uh, nub covers? That's a good question. I don't know. Because if you needed your floor clean, have you ever seen those uh, vacuum cleaners that roll around automatically? Yeah, I, I have uh, uh, Roombas. Well, I could get my friend with no legs and put the nub covers on him and he could flap around <laughs> on your floor. <laughs> <laughs> like a sea turtle. <laughs> oh, these dry tears, so. <laughs> okay, easy, Casey and the Sunshine Band. Oh, come on, guy. Oh, the Silver Surfer rides again. Whoa. Wow, dude. Domo Arigato. Mr. Shamwato, wow, holy God. Oh boy, there he goes, he's a robot. Look at the robot, everybody. He's the stupidest robot I've ever seen, stupid idiot. What a fucking idiot that fucking robot is. Oh my God, stupid robot. Oh, now you're, what's that? Creepsville, dude. <laughs> wow, there he is. The stupidest robot ever. Wow, dude, you got some moves. Imagine if I had the cleaning socks on. That fun time I just had would also clean my living room. Yeah, wow, so it's like a combo deal. Mm -hmm. Like surf and turf, but it's... <laughs> Clean and robot. <laughs> <laughs> this joke that I'm thinking of that I told before, it just keeps making me laugh. Are you cereal? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so that's Master Manufacturing. If you go to rickglassman.com, wow. we'll have direct links to the gloves and the door stops at least. I haven't put the uh, socks up there, but you could find them because it takes you right to Amazon. Wow. These are yours to keep. Really? Or I should I say they're yours to clean? You know what's fun about these? When there's a half moon, I can put these on and I can't turn into a full werewolf, but I could halfway become F Fozzie Bear from Sesame Street. How would this keep you from turning into a full werewolf? Well, because you only turn into a werewolf on a full moon. But what does that have to do? Well, if I wore these on a half moon, I could at least sort of become a mammal, but it'd be Fozzie Bear from Sesame Street. Boy, talk about ruining a werewolf gag. Yes. This shirt kind of looks like I just turned into a werewolf, doesn't it? Your shirt? Or it looks like, oh, like I turned into a werewolf and now I'm back to a human. 
It kind of looks like you need to buy a box of mothballs is what it looks like. My hair's still wet. Should I put my hat back on? Do I look like, does I look maddy and bad? Oh, the hair on your head? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Put the hat back on? I would put it on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real nice. So, um, Harlan. Harlan? Yeah, before we Harlan. continue. Go on. Uh, can I just read one more letter from my legal team? What do you guys think? Because I feel like that was a little much for me. And if I could just read one more quick, just so I'm comfortable here at your podcast. Here, mix this up for me. No thanks, I'm straight. If you could just not do that while I'm trying to read my legal teams. Well, okay. It is agreed henceforth and without conflict of jurisdiction. What does that mean? I'm not a lawyer. My legal team wrote it. So you don't know what it means? Didn't I tell know you? that I pay them to protect me. It's like when I did my bar mitzvah, I, I well, read Hebrew. I don't know what every word Jewish means. just Jewish today. I don't think I don't you've know, had a no, bar I'm mitzvah. I'm saying today I'm Jewish. Yeah. Really? This is a translation of my Torah portion, Nitzavim, from the book of Deuteronomy. Swipe back, apologize. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is agreed henceforth and without conflict of jurisdiction that at no time during the Shoes and Socks podcast shall the special talent be exposed or subjugated to any wooden trophies or awards displaying gold placards with the printed words, the six lead on said item or items. What does that mean? Well, I'm looking over here. But those were there before. That had nothing to do with me dancing. Well, then listen to this. Or subsequent to NAFTA violations displaying a golden statue of one of Satan's angels holding a golden star above its head. And if you want me to keep going, and subsequent to chapter 9772 of the Human Rights Act, there shall be no blatant display or inhumane representation of figures depicting a middle-aged and African-American male kidnapping an African-American boy and abducting a defenseless African-American baby wrapped in swaddling cloth. Failure to remove said contract breach items will result in swift litigation under the full rule of California law. Cordially, Larry H. Parker, attorney at law, quote, we win our cases or we don't get paid. Now, okay, clearly, wait, 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 wait. that's a man abducting that, a child. That and a can't be your lawyer. He didn't rhyme anything. Read that last line again. Cordially. Uh-huh. Uh, Larry H. Parker, uh -huh. attorney at law. So that's not the same lawyer. Right. I said I have a legal team. But all, doesn't everybody, they all rhyme. So read that last line again. Maybe it rhymed and I missed it. Cordially, Larry H. Parker, attorney at law, without a flaw, we win our cases or we don't get paid. Now, okay, are we going to remove the uh, kidnap statue or not? Um because I'm not comfortable, and neither are my lawyers. If you want me to read it again, a figurine depicting a middle-aged African-American so, male kidnapping stop, stop, an African-American boy Harlan, and a baby. Harlan, Harlan, Harlan. First of all, this is husband and wife, and that's their kid. Second of all, are you honestly telling me you want that's me... That's a husband and a wife? It's a fa I'm sorry, I got it wrong. It's a father and two kids. You're asking me that you're not going to feel safe and comfortable until we remove the black family from my living room? My Is that lawyer, really how it's antiquated not you the are? the black family. It's the act of abducting there's, children. There's no, there's no, you know. They can be black, white, yellow. I don't care if they're plaid. I don't care if they have say, diphtheria. You can't say yellow anymore. I don't care if they're you covered in yellow. psoriasis. You can't say yellow. I don't care you if they're. You cannot say yellow. They're not yellow. You can't say that. Well, guess what? What? Yellow. Now, either that goes, or maybe uh, there'll be a summons at your door next week. No. Larry H. Parker. No. Okay, well. Don't stigmatize this family by making him into a criminal. 
I see a I know you do. I know you do. And you know what? That's white privilege. And that's what society sees when they see a black man and some kids, they assume something. But you know what the real problem is? He should be stealing white children. The real problem is your projections based on race. I don't even watch films anymore. I do everything digitally. So I don't have a projector. And if you're going to sit here and accuse me of projections, maybe there'll be another legal letter coming your way. Now, I don't have an 18 millimeter. I don't have a 16 millimeter. So How don't- big is your penis then? Excuse you? How big is your penis if it's not 18 or 16 millimeters? Because you, you look like you got a little fucking wiener. Well, if you've got a Winnebago in the backyard, I'll fill it. Tell me if this threatens you. Not really. I think it more, I think I'm... Starting to feel like I'm straight, but I think I just went straight plus. Well, after seeing that debacle, because that was so straight and plus. No, it, yes, it was. looked like uh, you ever uh, see a jelly donut. No. Well, it looked like uh, someone glued a jelly donut on an asshole, and uh, they were French kissing. Mark moment. They were French kissing. I, when we animate that, the penis is going to be a big hard penis obviously that's straight um and then on the base uh, uh we'll have it be a jelly donut uh and then what's french kissing <laughs> whatever <laughs> you can keep that direction in um send it to me we'll figure something out what could be french kissing that's when your tongue comes out of your mouth oh then you know what it should be it should be a donut uh, I forgot what French kissing was. And um, jelly is coming out from sides, two sides of the donut, and the jelly is tongues, and they're just licking each other. And also, the tip of the penis should be wearing a Pierre French guy hat. That nice way it's French touch. kissing. That's real nice. And also, we should make the penis the shape. Uh, it still, still needs to be a penis and head, but it's kind of like an Eiffel Tower. Or a Winnebago. Uh, I guess maybe at five? Uh, Winnebago. At five? Yeah, I will. Okay, if that's the cutoff period for the contest. Sure. Well, let's get started. I wanted to talk okay. to you about okay. um, the Farley Brothers. What's that like? Oh, Rocket Man first. Okay. Yeah, we talked about Farley Brothers a little bit on Harlan 1.0, which was, I think, 15 episodes ago. I think that's I'd like right. to have you on every 15 episodes. How do you feel about that? Uh, let me check with my legal team, mm -hmm. run it by them. Yeah, and if you can, and you'll come back, you'll read me what they wrote. That's right. But yeah, if I'm open to it, but it's, uh, you know, these things aren't decided by oh, me. Other sentences. The legal team, know. my legal guys I have around me to protect me. And you're able to afford that thanks to your life-changing movie yeah. hit. Um, or was it a hit in the, or did it become a hit after the fact, like some of your other films? Rocket Man? Yeah. Rocket Man was a marginal success. It did it did well, but it wasn't a monster hit. That's a good way to explain you. Yeah, but it uh, it um it uh, remained a favorite amongst families and uh, and people. Uh, and it just well, I don't know what that is. I thought I had a sneeze. Sorry. Wow. Allergies. Where'd you have to sneeze in a porno movie? I mean, that was. Kind of creepy. Tell me about Rocket Man. What do you want to know? How it changed your life. It didn't change. Take a deep breath. <sighs> it, uh, it. There's something you might not rem remember. Okay. You've been doing this for a long time. Okay. You've a lot of shorthand. Mm -hmm. I sometimes will remind uh, some of my guests or even on other podcasts, proper storytelling structure. So right. when, you're, when you're going back to a certain time, you're supposed to start by saying, so there I was, like kind of painting that picture. So there I am, there I was, something like that. Oh, okay. And then whenever you introduce yeah. a character, the first one is you right away. So Got there it. I was. You okay. say what you're doing. An example, I'm sitting on the couch. Got it. And then you have to give a little piece of information about you. Okay. And so you go, and you know me, and you say something that's relevant to the story that's about you. Does Thank that make you. sense? Thank you, yes. Go ahead. So there I was, my priest was rubbing mayonnaise on my inner thigh and the phone call. Remember, you have to say, 
you know me, but also, and you know him, because you're establishing another character. I'll give you an example. Okay, thank you. So, so there I was. Uh, let's say uh, when I'm doing, the, the first time I did your podcast. Okay. Right? Uh, put up a thumbnail, check it out. Great podcast, Harlan Highway. Great thank, podcast. Thank you so much, thank you. So there I am, right? I, I, go, I go up into the, into the, can I say, bleep this if he says no, keep it if he says yes. Can I say Yes. Okay, um, still bleep it just in case. Yeah. So there I am, right? Uh, I'm going up to and you know me, it's sometimes parking could be difficult, but once you find it, it's easy, right? Sure. So I'm doing the thing and, and, and uh, I walk in, I see Harlan and you know Harlan, he's a, he's a goofy guy, but when the cameras are off, he's real sweet and you really get to know him. You really love this guy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I think so I, there I, am. I think that was detailed in the card I read. Go ahead. No, I read oh. the card and it said, it elaborated was on one what of you them just said. you know me's? That, that what a sweet guy I am. Right, and yes, 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 uh, yes. Stuttering school? Say much. That way we know it's an insult. Much. Try it again. Yes, 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 yes. Say yes much? So go ahead, start over. Well, you started, oh, the story. So there it was, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You know me. And every time Got we it. meet a new character, you know him or her and a little piece of information. Okay. So here I am. So it's, there I was. There I was. It's late at night and so I'm standing in Dolly Parton's yard looking in her window. She takes her top off and one of her nipples flies off, smashes through the glass, hits me in the fucking eye. So now I'm walking around like a nipple-eyed whore. What is it? And you, and you know me. And, and you have to give a little and, piece of information about you that's relevant. And you know me. I love nipples on my eyes. So I and waited you know, for the other you know one Dolly to come Parton. through the window. And you know, and you Dolly. know Dolly Parton has nipples the size of buttermilk pancakes. So now I'm running through the streets with Dolly Parton's nipples on my eyes. Oh, you're talking about Rocket Man. <laughs> We're talking about how Rocket Man changed your life. I'm getting to it. Okay, start over. Go. So here I am. And you know me, up at Forest Lawn Graveyard in the middle of the night. <laughs> I'm digging up Paul Newman's grave. You know, if you're going to laugh, it's on, a this funny isn't joke funny I to told. me. This isn't funny to me. I'm thinking I'm about this. I'm trying to tell you about Rocket Man and you're laughing while I'm digging up Paul Newman's grave. I'm thinking about this joke. Do you have 10 more minutes? Not anymore. <laughs> Are you coming? Oh, fucking tripping, bro. Oh. Do you want me to order you a cab? Huh? Do you want me to order you a cab? Huh? Harlan. Uh. What? Hang on. <laughs> Look at your neck. We love Paul Newman's lemonade on this, by the way. We truly do. Well, don't. Pull me into your like, your the, loves. Uh, Long-term glass and boppers. We used to start well, back when there were intros. We would always talk about taking your shoes off, pouring a nice glass of Paul Newman's lemonade. Because when I was a kid, I didn't know of Paul Newman, the actor. I actually thought he was the lemonade guy. Oh, okay. So when you saw him in a movie, you when you saw his name come up, That's you thought, cool. oh, they great, got, there's going to be we, lemonade in this movie. Well, I thought, oh, great, the lemonade guy got kind of the way that Trump was in Home Alone too. Like you're so famous oh, okay. from something else. So why cameo. don't we just picture Orville, Orville Redenbacher as the, the lead in guy? Die Hard? Yeah. I mean, if you're going to start throwing... Uh, Brand names into movie leads. Well, no, that's great. That works because that is a real popcorn flick. <laughs> I'd like to. That's a good popcorn flick. I'd like to flick open my straight razor right now and like draw it across my whoa box cutter, Betty. Easy guy. Tell me about Rocket Man. I interrupted too much. That's my fault. But do the proper story structure. Okay. And every time we meet a new character, you know what to do. Please go ahead. How did it change your life? Also, um, were you did you were you part in writing it? Yes. So, tell me from 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 the, uh, once you start pitching, start from there. All right. So there I am. There I am, and I get off for this movie, Rocket Man. And you know me, I was very excited about the prospect of starring as the lead mm -hmm. in in a movie. Uh, the script came in, and these two writers wrote it, and it was their first Hollywood script. Um, Where'd they have other scripts? They had done some spec scripts, and they'd probably not written Hollywood. on TV shows, maybe in other cities, but right. this was their first big Hollywood break one. in a movie. And uh, they wrote the script, and then they were kicked off the script, 
and the script was given to the two guys that wrote the movie The Santa Claus. With the guy from Home Improvement. Yes, Tim Allen. And oh, I was thinking of Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Him too, he was in it, yeah. But he wasn't in The Santa Claus. He was in Lion King. He was? Yeah. Are you lying? King. Okay. Yeah, he was Simba. He was child Simba. Oh my God. Yeah. I love, that's my favorite part of a drum kit. The symbol you're thinking of. Oh, okay. Simba. Okay, what did you say? Simba. S Simba. Mumba. Simba. Ungawa. Simba. That's what Tarzan said when he'd swing into a tree. He'd yell, Simba, Mumba, Ungawa. Ah! Do you want to have a runoff? No, thanks. I'm straight. Oh, I just can't wait to be. I love that. That was great. Thank you. You want to have a runoff? Sure. I win. Wow. So there you are. Yeah. Uh, you got the original writers fired. I didn't get them. Disney took them off of it. Are they still credited? Yes, they're credited. And what happened is the two writers from the Santa Claus came on board. They did a pass on it. Which means... They, they, rate, they, they wrote it. They went added through and, it and yeah. added and 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 uh, and then the 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 original writers. I said, let's get the original writers back so on. So you fired them. You felt bad. You got them back. No, we didn't fire them. They just did their pass, and then that was it. But we still felt the script could use more after that. So I said, let's get the original guys back because they wrote it, mm -hmm. and it's probably a, you know a sentimental and monumental moment for them. A lot of Entels. So yeah, I love the Entel. And then uh, it they they got back on and wrote it. And then I was I, I liked where the script was, but I was also like, you know, I think I need to put my touch on it. And so I went through the script and rewrote it twice and added all the stuff that I wanted to see in it. And Disney was gracious enough to allow me to do that and it was fantastic. Now, how uh, much money did you have in your bank before this process? Uh, you'll need to contact my legal team to uh, discuss any uh, financial disclosures. Um, All right. Yeah. Let's do that. Fortunately, I am not setting myself up for litigation uh, for, for uh, whatever I have in my bank account. <sighs> Again, I mean. Call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Johnny Cochran. Whoa, dude. Okay. Well, approximately how much? Uh, let's just say it was more than a Snickers bar, but it was less than, let's say, buying Australia. So Somewhere, roughly you, uh, I think a million to $2 million. Keep fudging. Pun intended? No, thanks. I'm straight. straight. Yeah, but Snickers fudge. Uh, all right. So, but, um, y you had done uh, Half-Baked. At this point, Hat Baked was after Rocket Man. Really? That's right. Oh, yeah. What What had you done that that uh, people that that allowed the the studio to think this man is allowed to carry a movie? I did a movie after Dumb and Dumber. My first movie was Dumb and Dumber. My mm -hmm. second movie was a movie called Down Periscope. Right. Submarine movie. And that was the movie that sort of blew the doors open for me, which I didn't expect, by because, the way. Because of the, the pressure so much down there. Well, that's a submarine joke. And you got to remember a very small portion of your view. 
of your viewing audience are submariners and most of them are probably underwater and can't get a connection to watch this right now. So that's what you call a wasted a choke wave opera. To, well, there's another hit. one, another one that... Well, that works on the surface too, waves. Well, so does my priest. You know, people don't realize that waves yes. also have it underwater and it's the wind of the ocean. Well, they're also on couches because I did the wave earlier right here on the brown, on the stinky brown muskox hide that smells like Eskimo uh, shat. Swipe! You asked me to do the wave, yes, I will. Swipe! I think I did it better than you. I know you did. My job isn't to... Um, to be better than anybody opposite me. My job is to give to them a safe blow. space to be the best versions of themselves. Okay, okay. I said, sorry, I said blow. I know you were thinking you're not, well, only a small percentage of your audience uh, does cocaine and they're probably at a strip club looking at some, depending on the personality, big or small boobs right now and that joke was wasted. Or should I say, waved it. The blow thing? Mm -hmm. Can I do a joke just for the audience that loves like blow material? You don't mind? <laughs> Some real good blow material. Could you do that on an Indian reservation? No, thanks. I'm, I'm straight. straight. Right. So uh, you were talking about how Down Periscope made gave you enough money to more than buy a Snickers, but not quite buy, not quite buy Australia or that was Rocket Neo. Man, not not Down Periscope. No, I'm saying how much money you had before Rocket Man was was between Down Periscope and Rocket Man. Correct. Which is probably around six, 18 millimeters. I'd say that was somewhere between a three pack of Reese's Peanut Butter Cups and let's say buying Bakersfield, California. So I know how much you got paid for Rocket Man. You sure don't. Yes, yeah, 2.5 million, which is a lot for somebody's first time leading a movie. And someone with SARS. What do you mean? I started SARS. Do you remember SARS? I don't. I only have Showtime and HBO now, but I, I heard there's some good stuff on it. Well, they cured it, so it's not around anymore. But I think you could get a streaming. Well, if you're going to swim, maybe you will. There's a lot of bacteria in the water. Only a small percentage of my audience is going to get that, and they're probably not even watching right now. Well, wave goodbye. Swipe. If you ask me to do the wave, yes, I will. Swipe. Swipe. Sasha Baron Cohen, the way you did that. <laughs> Yours was better that time. Thank you. Yeah, mine. the first one was mine, That's but that was all you, this, guy. Yeah. Wow. We're really good together, aren't we? No, thanks. I'm straight. We're really good together, aren't we, please? Okay, okay. So Man, I, I had such a good time with you. Really? Yeah. When does it start, though? Uh, well, we'll edit a lot of the shit down. I mean, we're probably at around 20 minutes now. So in 10 more minutes, we'll cut to commercial and... Okay. Ten minutes after that, we'll. Uh... Would you be okay just so I feel comfortable? Uh, I have w one more letter. Letter from my legal team, just to help me get through to the finish line, and then I promise that's it. Yeah. I mean, this one's a short one. I bet. Well, I'm just trying to protect myself. This is California. Let me get my peepers, as they call them. And this is just to help me get through to the end. Uh, here we go. In consideration herein of a one Richard Glassman, host of the Smell My Shoes Off podcast, it is advised that said host take extreme yoga classes, get flexible, and bend yourself over an S-Bond 3720 inkjet printer and take a deep, sour sniff of a bowl of rotten onion soup. Mm. Warm regards, Perry Mason, <laughs> attorney of law. <laughs> that was the meanest one. What was that all about? Well, this isn't me. This is the legal team. Yeah, but what's making you want to meet with these people and <laughs> sign off on Just their... so I feel good about what we do here and I don't walk out the door feeling mistakes were made. Mm, mistakes so, is what Homer says. Mmm, chocolate. That sounded like Homer. Are you cereal? Doing more Homer. 
like if you're sitting over there? Then like who's sitting over here, Scoop? <laughs> Zoinks. Do more. No, thanks. I'm straight. That was me doing me. Are you, based on your the, the generation you're from? Yes. Um, is there? Uh, do you feel that like um, homosexuality is something that's lesser? Uh, lesser? How do you mean? Well, you saying no thanks. I'm straight. It, it. I'm wondering if it's like, why does? Well, how does that matter? Well, it's when I get propositioned. Right. By a guy like you who stood up and pulled his pants down in front of me and puts me on a very seductive couch that oh, smells French. of uh, Eskimo taint. Right. Uh, I try to make it clear in a very civil way. I got nothing against the homosexual community, but when I get hit on, when I get what asked have to do all with these things, I go, very play. I go, no, thanks. I'm straight. What if I it's don't a woman? Wanna, what if it's a woman hitting on you who wanna, you're not interested in? I don't want to roll around in a bouncy house with you covered, slathered in Newman's own vinaigrette sauce. I don't want Orville Redenbacher's uh, extra butter popcorn kernels all over me in a bouncy house w with you. Is that what you think gay people I are all about? Well, the way you look at me when you were pulling your panties down, I those those track pants. And by the way, there was a waft of lasagna that came out when you pulled them down. I I'm did not, fart. Well, it wasn't a fart smell. It was like a stale. I've been wearing these watching Nancy Drew up in the fucking crawl space, Reek. You know, Billy Eckner has this new movie out that came out a few weeks ago called Bros with Judd Apatow. Okay, helping sure. Him. And that's a, 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 much like you and Rocket Man, it's, it's a, a, a homosexual leading a, a, a comedy, a rom-com. But, okay. but I, I, I understand that that's subtext and it's important to a, a lot of communities. Sure. But really the reality is it's just a rom-com and it doesn't matter if he's gay or straight or Puerto Rican, as long as he's one of the three. Okay. So when I'm asking okay. you, when you go, oh, no, thanks, I'm straight. Right. What does being straight have to do with that? For example, what if it was a woman who you were not interested in? You still aren't interested. It's not because you're straight. Right. So why is it so necessary? I would say to a woman, no, thanks, I'm not interested. Then why can't you or, just say that to or, me? Or if you'll let me finish, okay. or- Val no, Redenbacher. No, thanks. I just looked at my day planner. I'm busy for the rest of my life. But when a man, a full grown six foot nine Three. man, stands in front of me, strips down his uh, draw, Ross Dress for Less uh, track pants, a waft of me. seven layer lasagna comes out my face, mm. and he's flashing his uh, sweet nublin in front of me, I'm just going to make it clear. Is that Irish? No thanks, I'm straight. And that means I'm not interested in party time in a fun bouncy house covered with uh, Olive Garden uh, breadstick grease or whatever right. you do in those things. It was, um, I believe it was Paul Newman's vinaigrette and Orban Rodenbacher's extra butter right. popcorn, popcorn Well, seeds, yeah. see, you, the fact that you just know that says maybe a lot. Well, you said, I listen. Well, So Rocket Man made you around two and a half million dollars. And then is it, a, if you like the pun, it skyrocketed you, do you into the living room of a lot of fathers and sons. And families and, and straight people, gay people, all kinds of people. Puerto Ricans? Puerto Ricans, yeah, all over the globe. I went to Easter Island. Where is that? Is that in New It's the oh, second the most remote there. place on planet Earth. What's the most remote? Your wife. Your bedroom? Okay, well. Wow, guy. I mean, I thought we were having fun here, and I get that. Well, you burned me by saying my wife doesn't get fucked by a lot of people, and I burned you by saying you have no sex. Oh, no. Trust me. Your wife gets plowed by a lot of people. I was over at Ralph's the other day, and you seen that thing where they lay the groceries and it slides the groceries? Well, your wife was sliding down that, and the whole line took a crack at that sweet street walker. Fuck. Do you have any footage of that to prove that it's true? I don't have feet. What, what about footage? I've got <laughs> footage, F-O-O-T-A-G-E, not foot. No, thanks. It, I'm busy for the rest <laughs> of my life. Go. Now, did I spell footage right? Yeah. Yeah, with the Taj at the end. I have a sip of your hot chocolate. Or yeah. at this point, we'll just call it chocolate. Well, I think I like... You ever see those shirts that uh, George Michael used to wear that said, choose life? Frankie say, choose life? 
even though his name was George Michael. But that's a, that's a metaphor for taking a bite out of life. But it's also, I choose not to die. And, and even deeper, I choose not to be murdered by the blank cup murderer. How come you were so willing and wanting to drink the hot chocolate when I did your podcast? Cut to the clip of, of cut to the clip. What are you doing, hot chocolate music? I wanted it, to, yeah, but the music didn't, it didn't stay. Anyway, nice to meet you. Yeah, how you doing, guy? <laughs> you want to start a Patreon? Uh, just you and me, we do two episodes a year for Patreon only. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> okay. I certainly do. Um, I started a Patreon uh, solo podcast, Rick Glassman Nitro, I'm calling it. And I'm not going to lie, there's only one reason I'm doing this, and that's for cash. I'm only doing this for money. Um, I'm not doing this to connect with my audience. I'm not doing this to make art. I make my podcast for that. Um, and this is just for money. Okay. Yeah. Um, would you come on one of my solo podcasts so it wouldn't yeah. be a solo anymore? Not that many people will see it. It's probably only about 5,000 people who sign up. Yeah, I would. Great. I don't know what it is, but I'd be willing to, t you know what? I'd be willing to take a chance, Rick. And life's, that's what life's all about at its core, taking chances and getting out there, putting your neck on the chopping block and just seeing what happens. How about this? You and I, Vegas, five days. We record two podcasts a day. We get 10 episodes. I'll put it on my Patreon. Yeah. You I'm in? Gonna, well, again, I'm going to have to defer to my legal team, but if they give me the, 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 the lights up, the... the the legs open, or whatever the term is. Lights up, the legs open. The spread eagle. The spread eagle. All full hearts can't lose. If they, uh, if they give me the go ahead, I'm clear minds. I'm their guy. Um, before we let you get out of here, why don't you sing us one of your favorite num little numbers? And then we, we, I mean, this is the halfway part point, by the way. So if you need to use the bathroom, that's fine. I already used it when uh, I'm that straight. guy. You are. I don't know. Yeah. You wanted me to sing? Yeah. What's one of your favorite so things to sing? Um, could, could you, will you really sing? Like, will you really try? Yeah. Um, all right. Ready? Hold on. Ready. A candle flickers in the middle of the night. Two lovers fighting by the candlelight. The poison drips from their shiny fangs. Rattlesnake love, baby, in the bayou at night. Rattlesnake love in the middle of the night. Something like that. Tongues, tongues flicker, skin shimmers. They make love at the same time that they fight. Rattlesnake loving down by the bayou. Down by the bayou, down by the bayou, in the middle of the misty <laughs> magic night. That was the end of it. That was the end. I liked of it. it. You did? I did. Yeah. I really did. Well, if you want to pick up that album, you can find it on um, Apple iTunes. It's called Rattlesnake Love by the Cousins. Uh, when while you're on iTunes or Spotify, uh, check out some of UTK's stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, Caucasian and Melanin, welcome to the Take Your Shoes Off pod. I got an offer for you that you can't refuse. Go to Utkar Shambutkar on Spotify or iTunes or wherever you listen to your fucking music 
and take it in because I tell you what no one else is and I need your support. And honestly, it means a lot to me. Thank you and thank my mother and father for making me work as hard as I do with such little relevation. God bless you and God bless Quebec. Wave. Wave. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm just thinking about this, <laughs> what you did uh, earlier in the episode when you were doing the, the whipped cream stuff. Oh, oh, well. Do you remember? Swipe. <laughs> right? And then the proctologist said, where the hell have you been, Las Vegas? And I said, no, at the Pillsbury Doughboy's house. Because it's, it's the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> Who's your nutty friend? Wave! <laughs> You don't have a napkin, do you? <laughs> no thanks, I'm straight. <laughs> Come on, guy. This uh, is this is Come on, a guy. No thanks, I'm straight. <laughs> That's a clean load. That's a clean load. The music. <laughs> now, come like, on. Don't don't, I'll get you a don't squirt your jokes on me. Oh my god, it don't want to drip it on your muskox. <laughs> Just gonna drool all over your muskox. I tell you what, muskox and whipped cream do not go well together. Where the hell did you get your whipped cream, guy? Is that whipped cream or does the Pil Pillsbury Doughboy have a yeast infection? Where'd you get your whipped cream, guy? Oh, that's the Pillsbury Doughboys. He had a yeast infection. Has, probably. Or maybe it's a UTI. Uh, but my first album cover, I didn't know what a UTI was. And I, my, I wanted to go by the rap name Utkarsh the Incredible. So I, oh, I, UTI. I, I pressed up CDs. My first CD, my EP, it says UTI on the cover. And I have a cigarette in my mouth and <laughs> I'm on a canoe. And it's just emblazoned. I think that's great. It's kind of a metaphor for like, um, you know, a yeast infection <laughs> that builds bread. You're making that bread. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, but it also could, you know. Grow stinky cheese, but that's making that cheddar. That's true. Or burn. It could burn, but then you're then on fire. Yeah, yeah, then you're hot. Yeah. Wave. wave. <laughs> <laughs> pool. Have you ever been in a wave pool? Uh, I, I mean, eight ball. But I'm not like, I don't really know what I'm doing. I did love in Fresh Prince when he goes, Jeffrey, break out Lucille. And he has the, the pool cue, like, like, um, like, oh. the, like the blue singer who goes, BB King. He always goes, BB King. No, there's a thing that they have. It's a wave pool where it's like a giant swimming pool and they have a thing that makes waves. It displaces the water. Are you familiar with the term yeah, displace? Yeah, like, 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 when you like were a adopted? car dealership and oh. they have those, those things going like this. Oh, the wave? Yeah, but it's water. Wave. wave. 20 years since I've been on stage. 20 years since I've been on stage, but it's time, it's time to get back to it. Tony. Caruso. Tony Caruso. Tony Caruso, everybody. Tony! I thought once you step away, that's it. You know, almost like uh, an athlete. But look, Tom Brady has changed the game on that. Stepped away, came back, stepped away, came back, got the boards, kissed his son on the mouth, came back, stepped away. Why is it you get to do it and I don't? We do get to do what? Well, you've done the wave thing multiple times. I try to do one and you We just did it. We did it every I know, time together. but it was so lackluster and it's almost like I... Do you want to do it again? Well, no. Now I have a bad taste in my mouth. You, you really well, didn't did put you any eat, effort in. Did you eat in? the whipped cream? No, I'm not going to eat that. Well, Why then, would I? Who wants to suck on the Pillsbury Doughboy's yeast infection? If you have a bad taste in your mouth, I think maybe putting a little something sweet in might be good. Yeah, but I'm not going to take the yeast from a little puffy boy with a chef's hat. Is that Mark Twain? Oh, uh, I think it's Shania. You know, that's their uh, daughter. That's right. 
sometimes when uh, we sniff anteater meat, we get hungry for armadillo juice. Is that Shania Twain? That's Twain, yeah. Um, but you know I, Shania Twain is Mark Twain's uh, great-great-granddaughter? That's right. Isn't that wild? Mm-hmm. Way. <laughs> Sorry. Boy, I pinched a nerve there. You see, you do one too many of these wave things, and I, I pinched a nerve right at the end. Hmm. Well, you want me to get you some ice? No, I have a neck thing. I was one of these guys when I was a kid. I uh, When I was right. young, I almost died from, uh, if you, you know how when kids came out there, they were choked by their umbilical cord? And uh, my mother was one of these women, you know, some women breastfeed their children into their teens. So my mother was all about leaving the umbilical cord on. And I had an umbilical cord up until I was 18. And one time we were at Disneyland on the swirling teacups and we got going and you know how momentum works, guy. And my umbilical cord was flying around like Clint Eastwood's underpants at a Dolly Parton festival. And this thing wrapped around my throat and I almost choked to death on my own umbilical cord. That happened. A similar thing happened to my cousin Teddy, but with the uh, cat in the hat's tail. Oh, is that right? Nice. Before Teddy gets too high, I have a surprise for you guys. Here you go, Ted. Talk to me. The cat in the hat? Ted. Yes, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's the cat in the hat. Trying to... (laughs) First base. God. Now, I, I think we got to tap these down because I'm just clearly have a bit of nerve damage. Let's do it. Okay, you know what, guy? If you're going to make fun of my physical ailments, maybe this isn't the forum for me. Would you say that you prefer ginge or ale? I Mince. prefer gingivitis. If I can find a girl and I'm making out with her up at Lover's Peak and... Her mouth smells like she just stepped out of a John Deere manure spreader. That's what I want. That shit stink going up my nose while we French kiss. That it's like takes, a different generation. It really is. Times have changed since you were a priest. There's a Bob Dylan song. That, I think it's Bob Dylan, right? Where he goes, And at times they are a changing. Right. And now the song goes, The times they are a transgender and. Um, well, man or woman during. Uh, Mandarin, that's what I read earlier. I took it at DeVry. I remember. But remember, also, there's all the other Drins, Dolph. Lundgren, great actor. Although, I think Rocky was his best with uh, when he starred against uh, Orville Redenbacher and Rocky to three, I think it was. Or I think you're thinking of Rocky four, Ivan Drago. Rocky three was Clubber Lang, Mr. T. A pity the fool! Oh, God. A pit of the food. Speaking of Orville Redenbacher, and I, I, you don't have to answer this if you don't want, but do you think that the adolescent female... What is, what's the range? If I could finish the question. Do you think that the adolescent female children of the corn girls would masturbate to pictures of Orville Redenbacher? Yes. You do? Yes. I do too. I did. Have you ever wept in the corn? Have you ever gone out, snuck out of your room in the middle of the night and stood in the rows and wept mm-hmm. with the babies? Mm-hmm. Wow. You've been through some emotional stuff, guy. You want to talk about it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. Like some deep emotional shit? Do you want to throw it out there and I can maybe help? I got a little wisdom in me. I didn't have very many friends as a kid. Okay. And during the summers, I would go to my cousin Iris's farm and befriend a lot of the scarecrows. Okay. I knew they weren't real. I wasn't like a, I just, but I would be out there and I would talk to them. And Did you ever, like you did with me earlier, take down your pants and... Run backwards through the corn? No thanks, I'm straight. Uh, yeah. No thanks. I did, though. Oh, you did? Okay. So that's how you lost your virginity. 
I could while away the hours reflecting with the flowers if I only had a brain, right? The scarecrow from Wizard of Oz, but that brings back some memories, pony boy. I mean, Rick. Um, yeah, but so it is what it is, you know? Your friends were scarecrows. Let me throw something at you and let me see how you react. Is this Dolly Parton's tit? No, but it sure smells like it. <laughs> can I do it? Open your mouth, and then you could throw it at me. Anyway. Actually, I just looked at my day planner, and I'm busy for the rest of my life. I have it go in his mouth anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now that's right. <laughs> Chewy, stretchy, and areoli. <laughs> Now, can I get a little deeper into the psychology of why you had no friends? Sure. And... <laughs> mm, now, that's right. <laughs> Stretchy, yummy, and areoli. Good. Funny bits. Funny tits. Funny licks on a funny clit. I meet myself in an overrotten bit, but I only took around for a little bit. Old and Rockers girls are a little piece of shit until you find a round bitty, 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 baby, bitch. Turned 23, got on her shit, got her first job and conquered it. Moved to the top, became CEO of it. All of a sudden, she's the big man on campus, but with tits. Over and Red and who? Ginger ale. Over and Red or what? Put it in the pail. Sandbox kid and a wave factory nid, but it doesn't matter if you're sub as long as your Marine's on kid. Subway, no way, my way, yours. People say the bread's fake, not a chance, horse. Because that's just delicious, honey, oat, and all. Spend two more bucks, get cookies for your balls. And are you starting to see why you had no friends as a kid? <laughs> that's a good Scarface joke. It is? Mm-hmm. How many stitches? How many snitches? Still rapping, huh? They call me the candy rapper in college. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Sticky. I used to uh, make beats on Fruity Loops, and I would get all the kids in the hall who wanted to rap. Yeah, I don't, Come on over. I don't really like beats. They stain my teeth red, but uh, if you enjoyed them, that's good for you. Do you eat them you. raw or boiled? I don't eat them. They stain my teeth. Well, it how makes, do you know they stain your teeth? Well, I used to eat them, and I looked like I just uh, ripped the jugular vein out of a baby <laughs> antelope in the middle of the Kalahari with a pack of hyenas, and it wasn't uh, something I want to recreate. Right. I once uh, had beats and forgot that I had beats, and my poop was beat red and I remember I wasn't sure what was going on and I called Andrew Santino and I asked him about like I said have you ever I don't remember why I think I was talking to Andrew about butt stuff or something we were just young and experimenting well probably because his hair used to be blonde and uh, people used to uh, blast diarrhea beat diarrhea onto his head and now it's permanently red will you tell me if this is what you're talking about oh god <laughs> Good Lord, guy. That lasagna just got another layer. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Yeah, I hope it's Mary Calendar. Wave. Ooh, man, there's some huge shit. Whoa, what's this? Wow. This is really cute. Should I try it on? I'll try it. Her size. Daughter, and I take huge shits. Okay, great. First, First base. base. <laughs> 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 it's like you're still the scarecrow. 
Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to talk about? Well, I just wanted to, you know. Oh, you wanted to get deeper. Well, it seems like you're avoiding your your childhood with the scarecrows. Yeah. And I thought maybe I could offer some soothing words that helps, uh, you know, pull you through that traumatic moment of your youth that's obviously uh, had you carry that traumatic baggage through your life and inhibit you from reaching your full potential. So if if I could maybe share a few words of wisdom uh, from the scarecrow realm that might help you move on. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm just thinking about how I move the chair a little bit and I think I'm out of focus, but I think that's a good metaphor for some of this, what the topic of this conversation is. And like, you're going to help focus me. So yeah, let's do it. All right. Let me give you a few words from the cornfield, if you will. May I ask in the lights? Spotlight? Um, put a little uh, 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 poetry drums under. For, uh, no, something else? Yes. Go ahead. Keep the rhythm, though. And I hope this helps you move on. But please do it in that rhythm. So there I was. You know me. Stealing in the corn factory. Pushing up the grims like you can't stack to me, but you can't compare to nothing because they can't stack to me. Back to me, back to bridges, back to back, back to churches. Snitches get stitches, but that means they cut open and bleeds. Bleed red, beat red, my red, your leg, you turned into a scarecrow head. That kind Again, of I think we're seeing why children not only did want to befriend you, but didn't even really want to get within three nautical miles of your home. And again, there's not that many submarine fans watching this so well, that I can understand nautical. Well, I don't care if there was a submarine sandwich shop near your house. It had nothing to do with you attaining friends. But um, if I could give you some wonderful, deep, caring words of how to help you. Yeah, turn the lights back on. He's not doing it. We'll just have it for me. Keep going. Move beyond the cornfield. And I think this will... Move beyond the cornfield. That sounds like a, 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 well, a good name of a, of, a, of a short story. If I could help you get through this with some deep words of wisdom to help you... D-W-O-W? Move along. Are you ready to... Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, does that... I guess, I just, I, I, I didn't even think of it that way, though. I was just out there, it was like I was at my, it was at Iris's for the summer. Yeah. It wasn't even, I didn't even think of it like there was, it was cannibalizing anything else. But what was the scarecrow there for? What was it scaring? It was scaring the crows away from eating the corn. Ah! 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 Eating the corn that I ran backwards and threw. The crows were there to help me. Ah, ah, ah. See? The issue wasn't that I didn't have friends. It was that I was choosing the wrong ones. Ah, ah. <laughs> oh, my God. See, Richard? So I'm glad we had this moment. Unlike a lot of things in my life, like sexuality, race, and creed. Sure. My friends are my choice. Well, I don't know that Creed was a real person. He was a character on The well, Office, but the rest of it was okay. No, see, you keep, you, you, I feel like you haven't seen Rocky enough, but he was in Rocky 1 through 4, and he, was, he passed away by Mandarin Lundgren. Okay. When he was yeah. knocked out during, uh, as the, Johnny Cochran uh, uh, or B.B. King would say, this was supposed to be an exhibition. Okay. FC. KFC. Do you want to go get some KFC? Capital or lowercase? Uh, I think there's a lowercase one on uh, Sherman Way. Now, is that the type of case that your lawyers hold on to? No, that's just you get the chicken but without the skin. The Boxes or briefcase? No, thanks. I'm busy for the rest of my life. Hold me like the River Jordan. And I will be there for you, like you were my friend. But they told me 
Wanna be grateful. Na 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 na. Na na na. Um, hold, hold up, guy. You can't use the. Chee. I bought those when Michael Jackson died. I bought the copyright to. Chee. Where, where'd you get them? Chee. I bought them. I bought the the copyright. You should start a tea company and call it Chai Tea. Fifty dollars, right there. Easy. I told you not to do it, and you did it. Easy. I own the copyright to that. I'll bleep it. Or well, would you rather me keep it and give you fifty bucks? I'd rather take the fifty. Boy, this is it's just wow. Yeah. Who tanned this? Was it Untuk Klunka Tunk Bunk Klunka Tunk, or was it Hunka Bunk Klunka Dunk Bunk? Ben Stiller, the way you're talking right now. Well, those were Eskimo names, and I, I wouldn't like, I'd appreciate it if you didn't make fun of them. Do you want to go to, uh, I'm thinking sometime between now and January, do you want to go to Iceland? Uh, Greenland is actually, but it would be even better, a little more north, and uh, stay in one of those igloo hotels where we could see the Northern Lights, and we could podcast from there and call it the Northern Lights podcast with Rick Glassman and Harlan Williams. It just sounds better. My well, I think we could do that, which is a long trip, or we go to Home Depot, buy four colored light bulbs, uh, screw them in here, and get your funny little colors and just have the same effect. But could we have snow coming in? We'll, we'll, we'll get one of those blowers that do practical snow the whole time? Well, what we'll do is we'll hang your grandmother upside down from the roof. I'm already out. We'll turn on the ceiling fan and let her psoriasis <laughs> flakes no, filter no, around the I'm room. I'm not going to let you spread rumors like that. That's not Why what my grandma's like. Why can't I be creative? Because, Why is it always you? Because what you're, you're speaking poorly about my grandma who's not here to I'm defend herself. I'm not speaking poorly. I'm trying to clear up her fucking psoriasis you and pardon what? me for swearing. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but my grandma doesn't have psoriasis. Well, she and does And I want to get now. her on the phone. She does now. I'm going to get her on the phone. I bet she does. I bet she's got so much psoriasis she never has to buy corn For flakes. those of you who don't know about my grandma, she is a lovely woman. She she's sure very is. nice to her whole Wonderful. family, especially my uncle Bob. Mm -hmm. We'll cut to a clip. Oh, motherfucker. Oh, he almost got it. An almost an interception. Oh, oh. Now they have to run the ball up the middle for two years. Shut up, Robert. <laughs> this is going to be a long day for me. I think I'm going to go in the other room and just wait. I can't go through a whole game like this. It's the third play. Shouldn't be three and out with Philadelphia. You're not that bad, Mom. Again, there it goes. There it goes yep. again. Everything the opposite of what I say, he says the opposite. <laughs> Leroy Horde's playing. Oh, I... Get him! What the fuck you letting him? Oh, Jesus Christ, you fucker. Look at this. Look at this. What in the hell? Boy. What? Robert, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. Robert, I'm getting I'm going to watch the game in the other room because I can't take this. Look, no, look, look, look. I didn't. I didn't brush the passer. Robert, why don't you go in the other room? You know what John Wayne would say. Oh, shut up. That's Put the microphone down. That's goddamn ridiculous. For Christ's sake. I, I'm telling you, watching a game with him is like going through torture. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. He does everything he knows I don't like. I'm not looking at Robert. I'm not looking outside. I'm not looking at anything. I don't give a shit. So don't fumble the fucking ball. I'm telling you, I, when they kick off, I get so nervous. I'm just as nervous as I him. never rest. I never rest. Oh, you know what your grandfather used to say to me? Go upstairs and lock yourself in the bathroom. I used to go out in the garage. I watched most of the game. I watched, I was out in the garage half yeah. the time. You can't pass the ball. You just can't take that Shush. chance. Is it time for them to kick a field goal? Yeah. An 87 yard field goal? <laughs> yeah. All right, throw it. Don't toe throw it. Sit down. Sit, sit, sit. Sit. Wouldn't it be nice if I had a, had a quarterback like Brady and I can count on him? What about Ben Raplesberger? How would you like him? He's good. Tell him to go. <laughs> I'm tired of this constant that I can't sit and relax and watch a game. You know what, Iris? We might as well forget this year. Four chances to get in there and score. You know what, Mish? It's just as well as we want to believe. Well, Mishy, I don't think we're making the playoffs. We'll, so. have to, we'll have to hope for another year. We better stay healthy, Iris. Bye bye. <laughs> well, no playoffs for the Browns, that's for sure. What's the score again? I don't give a shit. You know what the score is going to be. First, First base. base. I'm going to ask my grandma if she has psoriasis. Well, I already know she does. Why would I ask to hang her upside down from the roof if she didn't? What are you, nuts? Ridiculous.
You just said nuts and dick in the same sentence and neither one was contextualized to a penis, but I wonder if there's some subtext there because you keep saying that you're straight. Well, maybe, uh... Hello? Jesus Good Christ. God. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. Hi, what are you teasing in Christ for? Oh, it's just that the volume was a little loud. Oh, okay, Robert. I mean, uh, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Ricola? Um, Grandma, um, I'm on the podcast here, and uh, a friend of mine, Harlan. Harlan, say hello. Hi, Scaly. Hi. <laughs> he thinks that grandmas have psoriasis, and I was I wanted you to say whether or not that's true. You don't have psoriasis, do you? Do I have what? Psoriasis. No. I thought so. Bye bye. Dude, that wasn't hello? that wasn't your grandmother. Hey, buddy. hey uh, Santino. Um, uh, I'm on the podcast with Harlan Williams now. You know Harlan? No, I never met him. Uh, Who is this? His name is Andrew Santino. He has the podcast called um, Whiskey Ginger with Andrew Santino. Oh, yeah. I lost my virginity there. Oh, he hung up or we got disconnected. I'll call my grandma back. Oh. Put up a thumbnail of Harlan on. Santino's podcast. Ricky. Grandma, hi. Sorry about that. Uh, I thought who, I had... said, who said I have that? You're not a guy. What the hell's the matter with that guy? I don't have anything. Wait a minute. Well, have you checked your legs? Come on. Well, I'm asking you if you've checked your legs out of concern. Ricky, who is this guy? He's, he's my friend Harlan, who is just so, cause he's so convinced because we, we just took Cousin Iris's gloves and the, the great cleaning gloves and her socks, the great cleaning socks, but he's just convinced that, that you're going to be needing to clean up psoriasis. And Grandma, stand your ground. Tell Harlan, say, I don't have psoriasis, Harlan Williams. I don't. What, what the hell is that? I mean, I know what it is, but I don't. Uh, well, what is it? Could you explain what psoriasis well, is? Well, I think if someone yeah, took skin the, disease. if someone took the time to part their hair on their scalp right now All and right, look in the minute. mirror, hold you on. might we'll see wait. it. We'll Ricky, wait. wait a minute. Wait, we'll wait. Hold on. Yeah, you go ahead. Good lord. I yeah, Robert. Talk about I denial. have to tell you something, but I'm talking to Ricky. I watched. Well, I Facetime with. Wait a minute. I thought I Facetime with Lillianne. You should see her walking. This is a clear sign and wait, of psoriasis. You know where your grandson is? Yeah, you know where your grandson is? At the crew game. How do you like that? But it doesn't start till 7 30. I'll call you back. Bye. Hello. Ricky? 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 Hey, Grandma. Yeah, I was talking. That was Robert. I just wanted to tell him. I saw Miss Lily Ann walking just now. Oh. My little Z touch face. Grandma, could you could you explain um, uh, to Harlan what uh, Uncle Bob does for a living? No. Me, Uncle Bob. I connect people's internet. <laughs> Niche specialized <laughs> shit. Telecom. Geographic you location. Two one one. Hey now. He does he does uh, I nine one one thing. What telephone connections for for mental disorder and emergencies for schools? What does that mean? He does. He has their phone lines. But nine one one. Yeah, well, some of them, when they connect to the fire station or to the police station. What does that mean? Can you, you, you explain lines. what that means? What does he do? How does he make that happen? I don't know. I ask him. Call him. He's home. What are you eating right now? Is that for your psoriasis? No. I'm, I was just sitting down to eat my dinner. See, she didn't deny it. Hmm. But I'm drinking a glass of wine right now. Busted. All right, Grandma, I love you. Mm -hmm. I love your psoriasis. <laughs> oh, God. Bye, Grandma. Please. Yes. Bye bye. Where are you going? I'm I'm hanging up. Why? Andrew Santino's calling. What? Andrew Santino. I can't hear you. Andrew Santino, he's no, calling me. No thanks, she's straight. Ricky, aren't you watching the Ohio State game? No. Why? I don't like sports, Grandma. Do you not love me because of that? Like Matt, how Matt you. likes sports? And I grew I up and I was you. more into the arts, and that's why you weren't that close to me? Oh, shut up, big mouth. You know you got a big mouth. I'm going to really hit you when I come out there. Thank right, you. Ricky, are you coming here Thanksgiving? Grandma, I can't talk to you about this now. That's personal, but I love you, and I'll call you later, okay? Call me later. All right, I will. Right. Mm -hmm. Bye. Wow. Introduce yourself to Andrew. Who? You would love him. His name's, hello, his name's, hello. His name's Andrew Santino. I think you'll really like him. Introduce yourself. Okay, I will. I think Is this Andrew Santiago? Santino. Santino? 
Yeah, hello. Andrew, I know this is an annoying thing because you have such a popular podcast and you probably get this all the time, but I wanted uh -huh. to recommend my friend Harlan Williams. He's from the movies. Not a fan. Oh, you know who Not he is. Not a fan. Oh, yeah. Oh, Andrew, Andrew, hold on. Hold on. Andrew, Andrew, one sec. I just want to let you know we are on the podcast now and he can't hear you. Don't care. Tell everybody that you know in your audience that this guy is a bad egg. That, that's true, actually. That's, I, I like that. Keep going. This guy owes me $16.48. I bought him. I bought him breakfast a couple of years ago, and I said, just Venmo me. He mm -hmm. never did, and I'm a little flustered about the whole thing. If I'm being honest, Harlan, I don't like how th this is how we're meeting again, but you don't duck out on someone's payment, dude. You owe me money, bud. Well, I'll tell you what, bud. I just bought you a $14 ticket to fuck off town, and I want you to ride hard and deep. All right, well, does it stop somewhere or is it direct? Yeah, it stops right in the heart of fuck off town, and I want you to get off the bus with your little blue Bermuda shorts, open your little brown suitcase, pull out your Curious George comic books, and smack your nut bag until you hear a violin start playing. How about that, pancake twat? Oh, it's so, it's that all sounds good, but I guess the, the question was answered. It, it is a direct. It's direct. That's it right. Stop yeah. C three B. C three B. Well, no, it sounded like it's it, you're going to fuck off, fuck offville, but it stops in the center of fuck off town. I thought you right, said. Right. So if I it, is fuck offville in town, what's the distance between the two? Because mm. I do have to go see my grandmother this evening. So if it stops, and that's a big gap. I, well, let me hold on. Let me text her real fast and see if. We'll wait. Can Go ahead. I Go ahead. Swing by. Hold take your on. take your time. Nana, is it chill if I swing by? Fuck off, Bill. Prior to town, seeing you this evening in fuck off town. Okay, so we'll see what she says, and depending on that, I would love to take it three B or three C. I did not hear what you said. Three B. If you want three C, there's a Milky Way bar sticking up out of the sit, seat, I and you can ride it all the close. way in, guy. Yeah, I just that, so, I, I hate to be a stickler about this because it is a free ticket, but I just it, I, I don't like sitting that close to the window. If there is an aisle seat, would be huge. Well, so I'll tell you what. Why don't we put you on the luggage rack and you and Houdini can jump in a trunk and suck each other's eyelid grease? Oh shit, harsh. Yeah, I am fucking around with this. Are you trying to tell me you got a free? You got me a free ticket to fuck offville and free fuck off town ticket. Well, and Andrew, I'm sitting next to Houdini. Andrew, this it, is one of the best days of my life. Whoa, I have never met Houdini. Well. I've been such a big fan. And I would love to meet that guy. I am a huge fan. I told you he's fucking bleep that. Bleep. So, and when I said it, um, Andrew, I just, I'm arbitrating here. I just want to let you know that reminder, he owes you 1648. He's only paid 14 for it. Not only is it not a free ticket, he'd still owe you 248. And since this was breakfast years ago, inflation, interest, are you still comfortable with, if he gives you this ticket with Houdini, you guys are even, and then you guys could be cool. You get me a ticket to fuck off town and fuck off Ville. And I get to sit next to Houdini on the I luggage rack. And you have to suck each other's so, eyelid grease. So? What is that? A, I don't understand. Are you saying that like it's a negative thing? Harlan, what does that mean? Is that a negative thing? No, it's it's a positive and you'll know what to do when you get there, guy. Well, then I got to tell you something, <laughs> H-Dog. Yeah. Big fan. Big fan. And I, this has all been a big prank. And you're on. We got a camera. Show. We got a camera right here. We got a camera over yep. there. And we got a yep. camera right here. You're on the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. This is actually Andrew. Andrew, come on out. Hey, hey, hey. It was is a copywritten slogan, so I've got to say, hey, hey, hey. If you change the inflection, we won't get sued. What's up, Harlan? How are you, buddy? Great to see you. We can't do any more. I already owe Harlan $50 for the ease from earlier, so the animation is getting expensive. Santino, great to see you. Let me see your penis. Hey, yo. Oh, yes. all right. Later, bud. Have a good one. Later, buds. All right. That's cool how that worked back out. Who was that? Andrew Santino. No, really? Who was it? That was really St. Cartoon Santino. I, we forgot to ask if his grandma has psoriasis. Oh, believe me. She has ringworm. You know, do all grandmas know about other grandmas? Do you think my grandma knows Mostly if his grandma has ringworm? I think she might. Or psoriasis? Will grandma, you ask? Grandmas do talk. Yeah, ask her, but be kind. Yeah. I'll be Richard kind. Smart. 
Hello, Rickola. Hi, how are you, love buns? <laughs> uh, listen, oh, is there a fight there? Woo! Oh, Ooh, I like that guy. Oh, he's good. Uh, now listen, well, I need I need to ask you a question. I know we're dealing with your psoriasis, but does Andrew Santino's grandmother have a ringworm? <laughs> what? Well, I'm just asking. You don't have to be so alarmed. These are things that afflict the Wait, elderly. I didn't hear what he said. Does, Ricky, Ricky. <laughs> yes. What did he say? Does I didn't Andrew know. He's, he's wanting to know if that, my friend my friend Andrew Santino, the redhead who has a little penis, if his grandmother has ringworm or not. Harlan, my friend, thinks that all grandmas talk. And you know what? Tell him that I'm not the grandma because I'm a different grandma from everybody else in this whole world. How's that? Are you serial? I'm, I'm young. I'm beautiful. I'm very smart. Mm -hmm. Most and grandmas are dumb and old and ugly. But let me yeah. ask you this. <laughs> are you serial? Is he what? Are you serial right now? Am I serial? Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, he means serious. That's how he says serious. No, I mean cereal. Oh. And I mean okay. corn flakes, which are, look a lot like psoriasis flakes. I don't want to get into the corn. Oh. Grandma, do you remember when I ran backwards into the cornfield when yeah. I was a kid at Iris's? Will you tell Harlan yes. about it? What? <laughs> Will you, I don't remember. I mean, I want it. Uh, Ricky, what is a mess? <laughs> Who is his friend? <laughs> You just tell him that I'm not the grandma he should be talking to. He should be talking to some old crappy one. Yeah. How think, old are you, grandma? Me? Yeah. How, how old do I sound? You sound a hundred and something? Yeah. Well, I'm only 92. Wow. Have you ever hung upside down from a ceiling near a ceiling fan? <laughs> she doesn't have psoriasis. Grandma, I miss uh, and love you very much. We appreciate you being a big part of the Take Your Shoes Off family. I miss you. I need you at home here. What do you need me to do? Do you need me to fix your Apple TV or get you rich eyes in on the new Roku? What? I need you. What do you need me to do? I think it's well, obvious. I don't need you to do anything. I just want you. Can I make a suggestion? <laughs> no. Can he apply? I just want you to come home. I miss you, Ricola. Ricola, Ricola, boom. I miss you too, Grandma. I love All right, you. I love you. Bye bye. Well, I was going to say apply some psoriasis cream. She doesn't have psoriasis. But by the way, well, honestly, you can hear it in her voice. If I you think. have, there's a lot of people out here. There's more people on this podcast that have psoriasis and are probably watching that are under the ocean. So if you have any advice to them. Well, let's just say this. Psoriasis is not a taboo thing. It's nothing to be ashamed Correct. of. It should be celebrated. When we were young, we grew up in a region that didn't have snow. Where is this? And it, this was in, uh, you know, Nevada. Mm -hmm. And every Christmas, uh, we were crestfallen because we didn't have snow. Right. And my gracious grandmother would let the children and all may the neighborhood in, may kids. May she rest in peace. May she rest in peace. Let me and all, and all the or siblings. Or she rest in pieces, psoriasis pieces. Well, may she, she was rest hit by a lawnmower. Pieces. That's right. That's how she died. So rest in pieces. And we would sit at her feet and she would shake her head and it would snow. It would snow psoriasis flakes. And we'd sit there with and this, our tongues this out. This is your and, grandma Reese's, right? And she would have a Reese's pieces flying yeah. out. Yeah, and, and we'd sing carols. And it was like, deck the halls. And she'd... Let me and hear it, one. Deck the halls with boughs of holly, the first Noel. And she's going like this. And psoriasis trickling down like a, a, like a, a snowy Christmas Eve. And all the kids with their tongues out catching the snowflakes. And... And so be creative with right, your psoriasis. Right, Don't right. be shamed by it. Uh, use it. Now, you just brought me back to the 90s um, with the way you sung those songs. You gave a little taste, and mm -hmm. then it moves on to the next one. You know, like when the white font comes up with, uh, with all the songs that are on the album, but sure. then the one that's being played is in yellow? That's right. Let me show you what I mean. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Silent night, holy night, all is calm. For only $19.99, you and your family could enjoy Christmas tree favorites mailed right to your door. Was a very jolly soul, Rudolph the red nosed reindeer, had a very shiny nose. Let it snow, let it snow, let this it snow. This holiday season, well, all you need is what? Outside One album. Is freezing. <laughs> is that fun? Okay, hold on. So the other side is freezing. It'll go to that, that whole thing, one take with the things. Now I want to have a voiceover where um, uh, that, so while he's doing, we could bring his volume down a little bit and hear this, um, where it's going to be like, 
uh, for, for two payments of nine ninety nine, you could get this holiday's blah, 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 a name of a song. Do you want to do that or should I do it? You, you do it. Okay. I get scared. Yeah. For one payment of nineteen ninety nine, you what's the name of a holiday album that we could think of that sounds real? Give me a real one. Uh, uh, holiday uh, 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 from our from our family to your holiday. Christmas tree favorites. Great, <laughs> great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> For only nineteen ninety nine, you and your family could enjoy Christmas tree favorites mailed right to your door this holiday season. All you need is what one album. Okay, put that in. Also, when we swipe back, you can keep this in so people can hear the Christmas tree favorites was Harlan's brilliant idea. Do you have a little sweat on your mustache? No, no, it's uh, it's Pillsbury dough yeast. Sorry. Pillsbury dough boy yeast. I'm sorry I asked. I just felt like I mustached you. Wow. That's, uh, boy. All right, is there anything you want to plug? Well, you know, I would like to mention that I also have a podcast. Yeah, we talked about it earlier in the episode. We'll cut to a clip. Awesome. I can get Dr. Whom on the phone and he will let you know. Who? Because, whom? I'm sorry, who? <laughs> no, no. His name is Dr. Whom. My doctor is named okay. Seymour Whom. How do you spell that? W-H-O-M. Oh, with the silent M. Okay. No. Who? Hmm. Whom? Are you saying hmm or hmm? Doctor Whom? Knock, knock. Whom's there? Who? Your doctor. Doctor Whom. Okay, okay. Well, you didn't. First base. <laughs> well, you didn't even let me say the name of it. Congratulations, man. It's, I, called the Harlan, it's called the Harlan Highway Podcast, available on all streaming platforms or watch it on YouTube at youtube.com slash Harland. I thought you asked me Williams. if I had a plug, and here you are plugging We it. really appreciate you coming on over. What's your Instagram? You know, I have one last thing from my legal team I'd like to give you. It's at Harland Williams. And I can leave after this, but um, this is a restraining order, guy. Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not going to tell you who I am. That's how it works. You have to say, are you? And then I have to say yes. And you didn't ask me. Like a vampire needs to be invited in. You have to first have me say who I am. And I'm not going to say who I am. So... Hi, who are you? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I can't right now. I'm busy for what? a while. I'll leave it here. It's a restraining order. Oh, no, this isn't my place. This is just a studio I rent. So I'm not responsible for that. Well, maybe I should read it to you then. Well, just unfortunately, so we're very that's clear we're, we're before the cameras time. roll out of music. Hold on. I still got... Thank you so much for coming over, Mr. Williams. That'll be it. Um, if there's anything that you need... Fuck off. Uh, the modern restraining order. This is how they do them now. Raid to fuck off town. You look like the elephant man. <laughs> Creep show. Alright, one, two, smile. Come on. One, two, three, four, five. Got it.